All right, what's going on? It's Bobby Skinner talking Giants, doing your week one New York Giants offensive line report. And I hate to start with such a negative, ugly one to start a season, especially a season we had such high hopes for. But this one was bad, man. I mean, Daniel Jones was pressured uh, more than any other quarterback by 13%. And it was truly just one of, if not probably the worst offensive line game I've ever seen. Like I've seen games with more sacks, you know, uh, than the seven, unfortunately. But they just, it was pressure, pressure, pressure on a down in, down out basis. You know, so we're going to finish this off with a Mark Gowinski segment. That's the worst segment we've ever done on the offensive line report. Uh, we'll look at John Michael Schmitz's first game as a rookie. And then, but we're going to start with Evan Neal, which is very frustrating because Evan Neal, it is year two. You are the seventh overall pick, and there should be, there should be more progress than what there is out here. And he had one of his worst, he had tied for his worst efficiency game in his NFL career. So let's get into it. Make sure to like and subscribe. I know it's not fun right now, but hopefully the Jazz can bounce back. Let's get into your week one offensive line report. Edmund Neal. All right, first play. Let's see lined up here at right tackle. This is what worries me. Is that it's... It, this isn't, like, horrible technique that we saw from Evan Neal. A lot of it was, like, physical ability. Right? So here. Like the footwork is halfway decent, you know. First step, second step, we're good. We got a nice wide base. And we are just getting overpowered. You're allowing the defense alignment to get leverage. And you are just getting overpowered and put on your ass. You're getting put into the quarterback's legs. Right? Now, hey, he could punch. Get those hands off of him. But a lot of what makes good tackles good is their core strength and the fact that they can take on that punch and not let the uh, offensive lineman use or the defensive lineman use their punch against them. You know, if you've watched these offensive line reports in the years past, that's what Andrew Thomas does. And he, I mean, he just gets bullied. And a quarterback hit, pit on your ass. This is the sack he gives up the doors Armstrong on the next play. We're setting, and it's just unbalanced and head heavy, right? And like that's physical stuff. Now, the hands are coming outside, right? You want them to be inside the frame, but these hands are outside. But look at how his entire body swings, or it's like his upper body is head heavy. And so this defensive lineman goes and rips through. And he just doesn't really have like the balance and the core strength to stay with this and move his feet with it. And instead, now you're facing the quarterback, right? When Rowdy, you want a quick set, get your hands on him, and keep your feet moving with this, right? Like we're Even though you have your hands outside, this isn't the worst spot right here. Keep your feet moving. But because he's top-heavy, this defensive end, Dorrance Armstrong, is able to rip through, and now you've got his shoulders over his knees, and you're giving up a sack. Next play. I mean, this is like, get out of your stance, big dog. Like, that's fine. Go, go. But immediately... You are opening up your hips totally. You're losing your footwork. You're not winning that. And honestly, this could, this is a little bit of coaching too. You have a wide seven like that. You can't you you can't set out here unless you're the fastest tackle. You got to really get out there, right? It's like you got to like just cross up your feet, bam, 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 and then reset. Instead, we're resetting, and he's getting around the corner. If you get this track and make it more vertical through here, he's got a chance, right? But like this, you, you have no chance, you know? So I think some of this is coaching stuff too. 
right? When you get those wide alignments, like you can't, you can't, you can't, you really use aggressive pass sets in those situations. Next play. This is probably the, not the worst one that we're going to look at, but again, good one, two, we're getting out of our stances quicker, but then we're just opening our hips, opening up our hips when we don't need to. One, two, keep your, don't open, see, see how his foot opens up and that gives an, a better angle for this pass rusher. If you stay in that posture, that stance and take one more step right here, it makes it so much harder for this pass rusher to get around, but instead you give him the angle. You give him the angle to go and get into your quarterback. Next play. Washes him around. Right? You see, like, even this is not a great play. One, two, three. This is not, this is not great. But at least you're not giving him this angle. But even then, man. Like... Get on this block and stop it right here. Keep your feet moving and his feet just look slow. Right? And that is what's the worry. Is this it's not just technique stuff, man. It seems like a lot of physical stuff. Here's where there is some technique and overthinking. And this is the mind games that pass rushers play on you. But this is something that showed up in camp. This was like what worried me the most in camp. Is that when they do throw these moves at you, he freezes, right? And he doesn't really necessarily have the foot speed to totally recover. So this pass rusher is going to show this little stutter that he's going to work inside, right? And that gets Neil to protect the inside. But he throws that stutter and bam, work outside. Swipe hands off. Your hands are out here. Hands aren't doing much out here. They're being used against you. Where, listen, I know he's showing inside. You got to wait till he gets right about here on you to push inside. Because what you just did is played into his game and gave him a, a lane for your quarterback to go and chase him down from the backside. Here, this next play versus Micah Parsons, the wide alignment. Here's kind of the opposite side of that, though. We're setting, we're setting. And we freeze. And this time, we're late on this. So this foot should be powering down. Instead, it's skipping, it's opening, and you give the gate and thank God your running back's there, or else you're giving up another sack. And even then you get put on your ass because you're kind of unbalanced and top-heavy. And then guys just kind of attacking the inside shoulder. Right? I mean, you got a high pad level because your feet are, your base is getting skinny. You're mistiming your, your punch is too high. They're getting inside of you. They're getting that inside shoulder and they're just pushing. And they're getting in on the party. And then this next play, again, versus uh, Sam Williams. Again, Sam Williams is the same draft class as him, right? This isn't Micah Parsons and Demarcus Lawrence. This is a backup. And now he's a good backup. I, I really like Sam Williams as a pass rusher. But right here, hey, we're good. We're good. And we're reacting at the right time, but it's slow, right? It's slow, and you bring this foot right here. I get it. That's what a lot of guys coach. But you got to have the feet to move with this. You got to have the feet and the power to move with this. And he just kind of powers through that inside shoulder. So it was a rough game for Evan Neal, man. You don't give up on a player, right? Like this, with his pedigree, it's the first game of, of year two. So there's, I don't even want to say overreaction. There's going to be reaction because it doesn't look great right now. And that's all on Evan Neal to build to get better than this because there needs to be lots of improvement or there's going to, have to be other investments made at this position or there's going to be talks about kicking you inside so 
let's let's hope that we look back at this week one and be like, man, remember when we thought Evan Neal was a bust after week one of year two? Because it looked really bad in year one. We did not see improvement, and we come into year two, and there's some technical improvements, but it just looks like def- like he doesn't have the speed and is a little too top-heavy and unbalanced for this NFL game. So Evan Neal, figure it out, man. All right, with John Michael Schmitz, the rookie center, first game in the NFL. To start with the snaps, we're not going to do a film breakdown of the snaps. Obviously, one led to a, a fourth down and a blocked field goal. There were other bad ones. I'm actually going to look at those ones in the film review to show how like it messed up the timing of plays. You got to get those up. You just you can't have those type of uh, plays. You're in the NFL. Get your snaps right. But as a blocker, I saw more good than bad with him. Now, you're going to see some reps versus Micah Parsons where it is rough, man, and Parsons is a different animal. But I did see more good than bad, and I saw him be an advantage in the run game, right? Like, we, I really think, and this is game one, uh, I, I really think this guy's going to grow to be a real, real advantage in the run game. And you saw some good stuff in pass protection, too. So let's get into it. First play, we're going to start with our pass protection, obviously, lined up here at center. Right, simple, but this is this is the stuff we saw in Minnesota. Good posture, snap the ball, get good posture, get your hands on him, keep your feet moving, wide base, good stuff. This next play, this is uh, going to end up going against Demarcus Lawrence. I mean, look at all the chaos back here. Yet JMS is mirroring Demarcus Lawrence. We're setting wide, we're setting wide. Feet stay square. Bam. Move with him. Working hand fight right here. Keeping hands off of you. Reload. He wants to mirror back in. Bam. We're here. Like good stuff against Demarcus Lawrence, who's like being brought inside to be that mismatch. Here versus the the one tech. Yeah, nothing special, but just fire off. Get good posture. Get your hands inside. Nice wide base. Good balance. Bredesen misses a blitz. DJ's got a scramble. Now, here's where we saw the bad reps. I think he had, gave up a hit and two pressures. They were all against Micah Parsons. So, you got Micah Parsons lined up in the A-gap, which was just a game record for the Giants, whether it was you know, no matter who he was going up against, unless it was Andrew Thomas. So, you're going to see on this, he gets beat, right? He sets towards him, gets aggressive. And Parsons moves so well, he takes advantage of that aggressive aggression and works lateral. Like, this is good right here. But you, when you're facing a guy like Mike Parsons, you got to be ready to power back down. Because Parsons knows that he reads what you're doing very well. His instincts are amazing. And you're not going to be faster than him. So you kind of, you got to be like ahead of him on what he wants to do. So watch these next two reps versus Micah Parsons. What does John Michael Smith do? He corrects himself, but he overcorrects himself a bit. So this time we're not as aggressive. We're setting to him. And then that little hesitation by Parsons is just, it freezes him, right? Because you don't want to overreact because then he's going to beat you back inside. So it fr- he freezes. Parsons' hand work is disgusting. Swipes to the left, swim over the top, and your foot speed is not going to match Micah Parsons. Could have got called for a holding and ends up being incomplete. Now, the next one versus Micah Parsons. This time you didn't set far enough, right? You got to get you got to get over more. Micah Parsons goes with the ch- ch- chop, the the cross, the chop. Gets JMS's weight forward. He's not playing to the full man. Parsons penetrates. You got the running back there, but you're giving up penetration. So I, I rarely, I very rarely think we're gonna see him lining up uh, versus uh, Micah Parsons type players in the A gap. But we're gonna be playing the Dallas Cowboys twice a year, and they're gonna try and do stuff like this. But here, you saw a good stunt pickup, too, consistently. Like, he picked up everything well, for especially when these two guys didn't. Bredesen had a couple mistakes in this. You set towards him. Like, man, good reading. 
pass it off, flip, good pit, good pickup. But the snap was low on this. Another one with Micah Parsons. Set towards him. Get hands on him. Pass that off to Glowinski. Come off to the defensive tackle. Good stuff. Jones misses almost throws an interception. And then in the run game, I thought we saw some good stuff. I mean, this was the first drive of the game. This is a be- I mean, that's a freaking combo block right there. That's how you draw it up on a fucking whiteboard. We're getting off the ball quick. We're getting almost hip to hip. We got good leverage, good lean. And we're going to move that defense alignment sh- uh, helmet back there, give Gwinski the leverage, and peel off to the linebacker, and there's your crease. There's your crease for Saquon to have a nice little run. Like beautiful timing, firing off, quick, good leverage. Here you get Micah Parsons in the A-gap again. You're going to have that size advantage on him. Make him pay for it in the run game. You want to work here? All right, we're going to wash you down. Just keep pushing. If there wasn't all this traffic right here, he'd be pushing them out. But even that little bit, with good footwork, keep the feet driving, it gives Saquon that little bit of a crease to get a couple a couple yards. So, you know, and every yard counts. Here in the wide zone, this is good, not great. See a nice run for Say. So good first step. You're going to lose ground the gain ground. Get at that angle you want. Get your helmet on this side, hat placement, and drive through. Get your hands inside. Get leverage, drive through. Good block. Good block. Give Saquon enough. Give Saquon enough. He's going to run through that tackle. But to make it better, and we've seen him do this at Minnesota, and this is just going to be adjustment. Be able to flip those hips. And he used, at Minnesota, he'd flip the hips and bury guys. This is the NFL. So you're not going to be able to do that consistently. But you just got to keep working, working, driving through, block through him. Like when you're running these wide zone stuff, it's you are taught. You want to drive this knee through him. Block through him. But nonetheless, a solid block. And then, and, and then I like, I like this. Push, push, push. Get those feet driving. Good stuff. I like. I just like the way JMS plays. And then the last play we'll go through. Hey, gives gives up. Gets some knockback from Monzie Smith. Man, he's got some knockback power in those hands. You know, we talked about him in the draft process, right? That's not good. But what I like is just understanding angles, and this is where the wrestling comeback comes around. Keeping his hands, keeping staying engaged, working your feet. To even though you lost this. Keep your feet moving. Stay engaged on this block to just hold it enough. Just hold it enough for Brita to get through here. And don't turn a bad start into a bad finish. Blocking-wise, I saw more good than bad. Now, hey, Dallas defensive tackles aren't that great either, right? So the real test is going to be when you're facing the Washingtons, you know, facing San Fran in week three. How do you handle versus those guys? Because that's a different animal. That's a different animal than facing Micah Parsons in the A gap. But for game one, eliminating the fact that he's got to get his snaps better, I did see more good than bad with John Michael Schmitz. All right, let's finish it off with number 64, right guard Mark Lewinsky, year two with the Giants. This was just pathetic, man, to where it's like you almost just, even though I don't know if we any of us have the most utmost confidence in Josh Suzuki, but it's like this is this was really bad, man. Uh, and I know this Dallas pass rush is insane, but it was just, he, it was technically bad. It was physically bad. It was just bad, bad, bad. And it showed having all of those pressures, sacks, and hits allowed. So let's get into it. I mean, I'm not going to break down this like crazy. You know, this guy's 31 years old last year with the Giants. I mean, this first play, just, this is a rookie. Mozzie Smith is very strong, but still. And he, I mean, he just just is more of a man than him on this play. Bull rush, forcing your quarterback outside of the pocket. I mean, that's that's really bad. And then here, this stuff like shows up consistently, and it showed up last year. That's why his pass blocking was bad last year. Mm. 
And you have a four eye. I mean, I understand you got to, they like to run a bunch of games, but you got JMS right here. Set. Show some urgency. Get out here. And instead, your hands come from low, and they just chop. Chop. Get your arms off. Your feet aren't moving. Your quarterback's getting sacked. Next play. We don't set to the full man. We don't have that full man relationship. And look where our arms are coming from. They're coming from low. Just asking for pass rushers to chop them. No aggression. They're coming from our knees. Up. Getting chopped. Open up your hips. Give a pass rush lane for, the, you know. Just really bad stuff. Here, watch, watch his hands on this. This next play. I mean, when the hell are... Who, who teaches this? Who teaches you to act like you're a dolphin and, and, and throw some flippers? I understand when they get in this alignment, you're expecting some type of game, so you're trying to help out Evan Neal because you think it's going to be a stunt. But there's no loss then. You can't use your hands when you're trying to work a stunt, trying to stay hip to hip. Instead, you just throw your shoulder into it. And you're allowing a sack. Like at some point, I mean, you're 31 years old. Like you have to use fundamentals. That's, that's that's fundamental stuff right there. That's like stuff you have to teach out of, you know, 14 year olds playing the game for the first time. Next play, you got an inside shade, works outside. Just, again, this is like, this is, if you're a defense alignment, like this is the guy I'm going to practice my moves on. set inside and it's just like it's just e kind of easy for these guys like no violence in his hands I'll work a rip I mean we've seen him get beat in a multitude of ways here first Micah Parsons and I get Parsons it's nuts so but He attacks that back, and there's just that upper body and core strength aren't there. You saw the Panthers attack just like crazy last year. Swim over the top. Feet don't come with it. Sack. Set. You got to be ready to get back inside, man. And then, you know, missing stunt pickups, which they did all night long. You set. Good job. You see that? Pass it off. Pass it off. You've got jam. Trust that Jamis is there. You know that this is a stunt. Why are you not pop swinging this foot back and popping out? Because now you're just giving a free rusher. So it was bad. It was bad. Uh, obviously, we didn't do Thomas or Bredesen on this. I hope Thomas is okay, man. I mean, this wasn't his best game, but if the only guy that didn't give up a, a, a hit or a sack... The only guy was able to do decent versus Michael. Please be okay. Hopefully, by the time this comes out, we have some news on that. And Bredesen, Bredesen had a Bredesen game where first the Dallas rush it wasn't perfect, but it was much better than than the rest of the freaking crew they had out there. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Like and subscribe. We'll go some through some more of this type of stuff on the film review that'll be out later today. Four year four the O line report. This has been a big uh, grower for us, and we appreciate you guys. Let's go big blue.